Um, thank you everybody for being here. I'm, uh, I'm very excited to begin this presentation. My name is Manuel Valle. I'll be introducing ELAT, uh, EDX Log Data Analysis Made Easy. All right, so as uh, MOOCs made their way into education, uh, learning analytics started making its way into MOOCs also, not only to monitor engagement or attrition rates, but really as a tool of educational feedback and educational research. So any analysis, especially uh, with MOOCs, needs something, and that is data. Um, MOOCs do data very well. They have a lot of data and they provide it one way or another. Unfortunately, the processing of, the, of this data is not, it's not always straightforward. It can be very time consuming or simply not feasible depending on the data management skills of the user. Um, for instance here, this is a real example of some records of uh, EDX. And there would be files, each file would contain uh, every click of every student for all the courses active for an institution. For instance, in Delft, there may be 50 or up to 100 courses at the same time. So as an educator or a researcher, you would have to wait through maybe up to a million of these records to find the ones that you're interested in. Um, but this is not the only way that MOOCs do uh, analytics or learning analytics. They also have their own uh, analytics platforms, such as the Insights, that's the EDX. Uh, they can show you some aggregate info, so the weekly, how many students tried a problem, watch the video, or uh, more like management style data, how many students you have enrolled, some demographics, or very detailed data. So for a single student, their daily activities um, and the contributions that they might show. So, the problem with this is that they can be really aggregated, really detailed, and not customizable. So, um, of course, there's already many, many approaches that can follow the a common analytics pipeline that you can get your EDX logs, do some pre-processing, put that into a database, and then do the analytics that you require. So I'll show you some of, the, of these existing tools you might have heard of them, MOOC TV, VizMOOC Analyze, MOOC RP, and ETX to BigQuery. But as you can see, only two of them are still active. The rest are not active anymore. This means that they're not maintained by the developers. They are outdated or they, uh, some of the tools that themselves use are outdated and they're not compliant anymore. So then the tool, yeah, you cannot use them. Something that they also have in common is that, uh, as you can see, they require a lot of setup knowledge. All of them require at least one programming language and at least one database management system with, uh, with the language for the queries, for data extraction, data storage. So it's not super straightforward and they're all with like, big solutions for an institution. So if you're a single user that wants to do research in your course, it's not very easy. And this is what ALAT com comes in. Of course, it's still active. Uh, we're showing it now, so that makes sense. And it requires no set of knowledge. It has no server or anything. So let me explain how does that work. ELAT is completely browser-based. So it's uh, platform agnostic. It has no installation, no setup. And because it's uh, browser-based, it works on the internet, it's always backwards compatible. If they made new things on the internet, it would break the previous stuff. We don't want that. Another thing is that completely on the client side, the processing and the storage. So we don't have to maintain a server as uh, the ones that provide the tool, but you also don't have to set up a server. Everything is done inside of the browser. Uh, the data input is the, what you get from EDX. You don't have to modify or pre-process anything just as you get it. Um, the visualizations that we provide have some initial analysis and exploration. They're not meant to be your, your endpoint, like the, the visualizations that ELAT provides won't give you everything that you need to know, but at least it, it gives you a very good idea of, uh, of a snapshot of your course. And we work with uh, learner session tables. 
which are CSV files that you can use for further analysis, maybe with R, Python, or whatever other uh, type of script that you work with. Um, these learner sessions are in a way to what uh, John showed of the, um, of the event, the eventization. Uh, these learner sessions are a series of continuous learning activities from the start, uh, from the login to log out of a single student. They're based on MOOCDB. MOOCDB is a shared data model for learner and MOOC interactions that is not only for ADX, was platform agnostic introduced a few years ago. So that's what we, uh, we, we use as the base for the learner sessions. They are categorized by the type of material. So you have a video sessions, quiz session, forum, etc. They all have general information, the student uh, executing the session, the start time, end time, the duration, but they also have category specific information. For instance, a video uh, learner session would have the video ID, so which video they were watching, the number of pauses, rewinds, fast forward, etc. For instance, this example that I have on the slide is a student starts watching a video at 9, pauses at 9.05, then plays again at 9.07, finishes 9.13, so you have the duration of 13 minutes with one pause, one play, etc. You get the idea. Okay, now to show you the tool itself, uh, this is what ELAT looks like uh, once you've filled your data, of course. It has uh, some snapshots of the data, your course, how many students, what type of content does it have, uh, and a general preview of the sessions that you have already, that uh, ELAT has already processed. And there's eight visualizations. I'll go over a few of them. For instance, these first two show uh, the session counts by type on the left and the session and student count uh, every week on the right. Other visualizations are uh, actually derived from previous research. The one at the top is a behavioral pattern of learners, also similar to what uh, to what John just showed us. Um, so in this case, uh, you can go by week, separate passing students or failing students, and go into the level of detail that you want to see for the, for the links. And then uh, researchers or instructors could see, OK, I can see that passing students always in week one start the forum and then submit, while failing students usually don't submit on week one. So then you can start uh, getting a good idea of what's happening uh, by the week. And the one in the bottom is the video watching behavior. So which, uh, the videos are in order and then colored by unit. So then you can see ah, something weird is happening in the orange one. They watch the second video and then skip to the green uh, unit, etc. So then that can give you uh, an insight into the behavior of the students. So uh, a little bit of the technical side, how do we implement this without maintaining a server and without you having to install or set up a server? So we use HTML5 to process the logs. The logs that you get from EDX are compressed. So then you just put them into your browser and this will automatically decompress and read them, pass them to uh, JavaScript that will, re that will read each one of the events and start processing these uh, learner sessions then it's all stored into a database called IndexedDB, which is in your browser, uh, and it will take up to 10% of your available disk space. We'll see what that means uh, when you actually put up a course. And finally, the visualizations are with uh, Chart.js, Apex Charts, and D3 for the custom ones. And again, HTML5 will generate these CSV files that you can then use further into your research. And while we're in the technical side, I'll tell you a bit about how we evaluated uh, the system. We put up four courses from Delft, uh, and we tried it in Windows and in Mac, in Chrome and Firefox, and it works. And these are all the average values that we got. From the four courses, I chose these two to show you. The solar energy course that uh, that is available for 731 days. So almost two years it's open. It gets almost 65,000 students and with uh, 845,000 sessions. 
it takes around five gigabytes of disk space in your database. So, uh, like I mentioned before, if your limit is 10% of available disk space, five gigabytes is, still, is really uh, within normal parameters. And uh, it took 324, so around five hours of processing time for all this. So if you just leave it overnight, and the next day you would have processed 731 files of almost a gigabyte each without you having to do anything. And uh, something else that we wanted to note, this is the Mind of the Universe course. It's a much smaller course, 2,000 uh, students only. But it also took around two hours of processing time, even for a very small course. And this is because there were a bunch of other courses running at the same time in TU Delft, 184. So uh, the files are really big, no matter what. As if you remember, all the files uh, have the information from all the available courses. Then we evaluate um, ELAT for our users. So for this, we took seven researchers. We invited seven researchers, four females, three males, four were data, four are data analysts, and three are novices, novices uh, handling data. The setup was online, we just sent a form and they did everything online, self-paced. All of them took around one hour to complete the whole study. And the study contained three parts. We asked them to perform an analysis task using a sample, da sample data set to obtain 10 insights on a sample course. Then a user experience questionnaire, which consists of 26 bipolar items to measure six factors. I'll go a little bit into detail. And finally, a survey on the system features and suggestions. So first of all, for the analysis task, uh, we provided with sample data uh, to our participants so they can see these tables and the graph of a real course uh, from TU Delft, anonymized, of course. And um, we asked them to really explore the data, click on all the visualizations. They're all interactive, so you can change the dates, uh, compare passing students and failing students. Um, have a different date range. All the charts, once you hover on them, you get more information. So um, by asking them to find 10 insights, uh, it really forces them to play with the data. Uh, some of the insights that we got for, were, for instance, uh, in the form interaction chart, this uh, graphical visualization, there was a, a lot of a cur curiosity of what's happening in the middle, why is there such a spike in the amount of uh, posts of, by the students. So then we consider that it's very important that uh, all the participants agreed, well, there's something interesting here and that they could find quick information about the learners forum viewing and posting behavior. And then uh, from this, they can enable the lecturers or instructional designers to build in some scaffolds and encourage or enhance for participation. Uh, insights were also gained in the video transition chart. So for instance, uh, one of the participants mentioned the video interaction chart is very useful because it shows the difference between the structure of use and sequence of videos and the actual perception of the learners to the sequence in practice. Um, finally, for the learning path, our chart here, uh, here the comparison of passing and failing learners, so the adherence or deviation from a design learning path. If you as an instructor know uh, what you intend the path to be every week, then you can see here, well, it seems that the students are not really staying to what I uh, planned for the course. And uh, how they go from one learning activity to the other one might be different to the to the intended behavior. So after uh, having the participants really uh, mess with ELAT and move it around, we asked them to perform the user experience questionnaire. It's a, if, it's a standardized um, evaluation tool to rate the usability of a product depending on these six factors that you see here. Attractiveness, perspicuity, which is uh, how easy it is to get familiar with, uh, with the tool the efficiency of the tool, dependability, stimulation, and novelty. Um, 
it's commonly used in bigger groups, so not only seven, but for a prototype and exploratory study, it's a, it's a valid tool. Um, the gray bars represent the average grade uh, provided by the study, and the black lines are a 95% per, uh, confidence interval. So the strengths of ELAT come in stimulation and novelty. Since ELAT is supposed to be a processing tool for them uh, that you can pro uh, do your own analysis, it's really nice for us to see that stimulation and novelty had the highest, uh, highest grade because it's only supposed to be a primary tool for you to then your, do your analysis. On the other hand, um, the low perspicuity can come from the fact that it just, it's a course that you didn't know, that participants didn't know, so then you're just seeing a bunch of charts of something completely new without any other documentation. So it's understandable that um, they didn't consider it so easy to get familiar with. And it shows a wide range because uh, four of our participants were experienced data analysts and three were novices with analysis. So it makes sense that uh, there's a wide range there. And uh, finally, in our survey, uh, the strengths that were mentioned by our, our participants is the indicator stable is a quick descriptive stats tool, so easily they can um, see the current grades or the current uh, status of the course. That's very useful. They consider very useful the download or downloadable session database, which is great because that's, uh, that's uh, the core of ELAT, so it's good that they consider it useful. And the customizable and downloadable graphs, especially the three ones that I showed, the forum, video, and learning path. So uh, it's very encouraging to see that they consider that as, as a strength. The learning point or the shortcomings was that uh, they mentioned that it, it's really unstructured. So it would be, that's one of the main things that we have to improve, have a better structure and uh, less graphs. So uh, less is more. And what we learned from this process is that the client-side processing, so having no server, really requires some creativity in the code because, yeah, tools are usually, when you're processing big amounts of data, you always have a server to do all the heavy lifting. And now all the heavy lifting is done in your machine, storage in your machine. So that took some uh, creativity. Um, another problem was uh, limited documentation on the side of uh, ADX. The last update on the documentation is from 2017. So um, they explain to you what they have, but it's not really uh, enabling users to, uh, to use this data very easily. And this is, a, this is the gap that we're trying to close with ELAT. Um, there's some format changes. When the mo EDX mobile app was introduced, it shows a very different uh, format in the event and there's no documentation and there was no explanation for this. So after looking at errors and errors, we found it and we fixed it. So there's a few cases like this that just have to be handled on the fly. Uh, and changes in the MOOC strategies. So there's the open response assessments in EDX. It's a new type of uh, assessment that was not used when MOOCDB was developed, for instance. So at this point we have to uh, get creative with the session style and how to process them. And finally, uh, the, we need grounded visualizations. So the most useful or noticed charts that I showed you came from research. All the other ones were more of a, yeah, an engineering proof of concept that I did when I started this project uh, last year. So it's pretty obvious that, yeah, researchers wanted to see something that is grounded with some uh, learning thought behind it. And on that note, I would like to finish with the future work. So the first thing that we would have to do is a dashboard study. So uh, have an iterative process where we ground each implemented visualization in theory and adoptability. So not just throw charts because they look pretty, but actually think about them which was proven by the fact that uh, the participants really liked the ones that have a foundation. 
and a replication study where participants replicate their own research done on EDX, but this time using ELAT. So maybe they uh, get more ideas or some de if they work with a very small subset, now they can implement it on a whole course or several courses because the processing is now automated for them. Can they get uh, additional insights, do it faster, etc. And uh, well, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, there is uh, all the links if you want to see them. You can see the website, you can try the tool. We have a sample data set. You can play with it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.